Hello, my name is Adam Bean and today I would like to integrate or introduce CDI dependency injection to serverless functions and the project FN project. So in Java E, we could consider this as an entry point of a, let's say, serverless function. This is like JAXRS resource, but what you usually would do, you wouldn't code any logic here rather than do it in regular Java classes. So let's do that. So I would like to introduce a class with the name Pinks. And this class will have some business logic with uh, yeah, hello, and it will return hello from server. And this resource would use the class. So it will just uh, care about deserialization and deserialization of parameters and return values. And actually, will just delegate to the class. So looks like that. Now, what about uh, serverless? So how to do it in serverless world? So in serverless world, uh, first, I will have to start the server. If there is no server, there is no serverless. So now I would like to create a, a folder called uh, CDI and FN. And in this folder, I will scaffold a project with Java as runtime. So I will just do this, Java. And it creates uh, the boilerplate with a function YAML and a function. So let's take a look at that. So I would like to refresh the project and what, uh, just build that. Yeah, it is hello and we have it here. So we have this Java 9 as a target, which I'd complained a bit. And, um, and we have the functions or the APIs, which we actually do not need this time. So I will just delete that. And instead, I will have to introduce the uh, reference to weld. And uh, then my test will break because it contains some dependencies to the FN project, but the function is actually a pure Java function, so there is no dependency to anything else. So what I would really like to have is here exactly the same. I would like to introduce or just copy this just here. The pink refactor and the pinks is here. And I would like to inject to inject the pinks pink and then just say here echo plus this pink hello plus let's say input whatever plus input so um <clears throat> of course uh, it complains on such a dependency no pins matches the injection point there are several reasons the so main reason is we don't have pins xml so in order to have pins xml we have to go to source main there's no resources so i will have to add the folder resources and hello source main resources and meta inf and a folder meta inf this is how it's defined so we have we are in a jar environment and uh, what i need a diploma descriptor and the diploma descriptor just says dependency injection is everywhere so now uh, it recognized that, so it looks better. But it will still break because there is no bootstrap. So what we could do, we could just misuse the constructor for that and say se container. No. Se container initializer, new instance. And what I get back is the uh, initializer. And the initializer, the uh, sorry, initializer gets uh, the container back. And this is the container. CDI runtime. I call it runtime. Container might be confusing. This and then we need a field. 
see the run time. And now we are almost ready to go. So it, it won't work this way because uh, we need to resolve the first class. So what we could do, of course, we could say this CDI runtime, select and um, add to the class and we'll get an instance back. But this is a bit boring. So instead of this, I will introduce another class to show you that it actually works and the class called uh, some logic and this class will return 42 and we get the logic here injected so let's do this at inject and some logic logic plus this uh, hello and semicolon and of course this logic method yeah not a good name but uh, it should work so right now so instead of doing that we can say this CDI runtime dot select and I would like to have the uh, pings class and what I get back is the instance of pinks, pinks instance, and then I can say pinks instance dot get hello. So I get the instance and invoke hello. So now this is like a bootstrap of the whole container, but uh, what happens now, this pinks becomes a managed bean, and from then dependency injection, CDI, CDI um, sorry, interceptors should just work. So now let's see whether it actually works. So I would like to swap to our uh, uh, console terminal and say fn deploy and uh, minus minus app call CDI and I would like to have a local deployment. And it just builds everything behind the scenes. Of course it has to pull now the weld SE dependencies uh, because it is the very first time which comes with um, some dependencies creates the runtime and deploys the runtime at the same time and uh, the performance of that is depending on the internet connection internet speed and of course size of the dependencies and uh, let's see how many we have so we only have the weld core so it's not that bad. So now it's done and we see the route CDA and uh, FN. So this was one time deployment. And what we could take a look is at routes L from CDI. And we see this is routable. So we have one route. And now I could try to invoke that. So let's try this. Curl and actually just that should be enough. We don't have any parameters. And we have echo from server 42. So um, obviously it has to work. Why? Because our uh, hello function, where is it? Uh, our sum logic method returns 42. This pings. Um, gets injected the sum logic with the method and our function uses uh, CDI runtime to get an instance of pinks, uh, gets the instance back and invokes the method hello. Um, of course you could combine it with JSONP, JSONB, JPA. So it's fair because Java EE, Java EE is already a modular platform. You can just pick and choose, for instance, bin validation, you can pick and choose your APIs and include it to a serverless platform. So thank you for watching and see you at upcoming conferences, workshops or even ehex.com. Thank you and bye.